Now let's begin our modeling process by drawing out the bike frame. So uh, this is lesson 08 start and it's just where we left off. We've imported our image plane into our side view and we're ready to start building some geometry. So the first thing that we'll start with is this piece right in here. And so we're going to use a series of curves. As we talked about when we talked about NURBS, uh, these curves can be used to build this geometry. So we'll start by building a curve around the outer portion of this. Okay. And so we'll go to Create, CV Curve Tool. If we open up the options for that, we want to make sure that it's set to cubic. All right. And now we can start building. So we'll start from the front. And somewhere in here, you don't have to be exact, we'll just start clicking some points. Okay. Now up here, there's sort of a, a sharp little curve, so we want to put a couple of points at least close together. And then as we get here, out here to do these smoother curves, we can start to space our points out a bit more. Okay. Now as we start to come in here on, again, this sharp angle, we want to put maybe three points right there to get a nice sharp curve and do the same thing down here. Now we can always move these points so you don't have to be exact at this point. Okay. And what we're really concerned about is the curve and not necessarily the points. So we'll go ahead and bring this down. Okay. I'll hit enter to complete the curve and now we can modify this. So we can come in here and let's say we want to tighten this up. We'll just grab this point and move it a bit closer. Okay, so you can see it's smoothing between these points. So the closer the points are together, the sharper that curve is going to be. Same thing down here. And then we can go ahead and move these points using our image plane as reference so that we get a nice, nice circular shape down here. Okay, we can do the same thing here. I want it to be kind of up at the top of this shape. So I'll just take these points and move them. Now, under here, we're going to have to kind of use our best judgment on where that actually is. Probably something like that. And go ahead and move this up here a little bit. So we've got kind of a tighter corner here. All right. And then we can modify those points as well. Okay. So once we've got this main curve built, you can see that it's actually built on the origin in one flat plane. Okay, so we're going to use this curve as a basis for a few other curves. Okay, and so we want to, wherever we see a change of direction, we want to have a curve. So we want to have one right here, another one right here, and another one right here. So let's start by just duplicating this curve. So I'll hit Control D to duplicate. Let's go to scale and we can start to scale this down a little bit. I want to get the pivot up here. So I'm going to go ahead and center the pivot. And we can start to move it around where we want it. Let's scale it down a bit more. Okay, this isn't going to get us exactly where we want. So we need to actually move those CVs. So just as we did with the initial curve, we'll take these CVs and match them up. And this time we'll match them up with this line right in here. Okay, and so we'll try to maintain the spacing. Okay, that looks pretty good there. We'll try to maintain that spacing between each point, but we'll also try to match up that shape down here. Okay, so we'll go ahead and pull that down. This one will do the same thing. We'll kind of pull it down, but we want to match it up with the shape, so that means we've got to move it back just a little bit. Try to maintain the spacing as much as possible. Okay, and this we'll need to change a little bit more. It's going to be at a little bit of a different angle. All right, so we will end up with something like that. Okay. If we take a look at it, it's on that same plane. So I actually want to move it out a little bit. So I'm going to move it out in the X. And first, let's go ahead and freeze our transforms. And then we can go ahead and move this out. Okay. And so if this is the center of that frame, this is going to be the widest part 
on one side. So let's maybe do 0.7 coming out. And maybe make that 0.8, give it a little bit more thickness. All right. Now we want to have another one that's right inside here. You see this change of direction. So again, control D to duplicate. Okay, let's scale it in just a little bit. That's going to get us a lot of the way there. You can see up here, this is already matched up fairly well. Down here, let's go ahead and select all those points and just kind of move them up a bit. That gets us pretty close to what we want. Okay, at any time we can go back in modify any of those points. Now because we duplicated this one from this one, it's going to be on the same plane as this one, not this one. So uh, it's going to be on the same plane as this second curve, which is what we want. Alright, so that's pretty close. This we'll have to modify just a little bit. Okay. So now we've got three curves here. Alright, the next curve that we want to create is this interior piece. And this actually comes back into the center. Okay, and so we want to actually create a curve. So we'll again, Control D to duplicate. Scale that in and we can get that top portion to match up fairly well. But we need to modify this down here. So we can take these points, start to move those up. Okay, this is going to be a bit smoother, so we can start to move these points out a little bit. Okay, and then just start to pull this geometry out to match up with the shape that we've got here. Alright, now I want to space this out a little bit, so I'm going to move this point down. right about there maybe same thing here and just space those out a little bit so that we get are able to cover that entire length okay and so I want to kind of space them out evenly okay so we get end up with something like that and let's do the same thing up here. We want this to be this bottom line. So we'll just move those around. This we can move over. Now this is a very smooth transition, so we don't have to have those right next to each other. Okay, so we end up with something like that. All right, and now this, we want to actually move back towards the middle. You see there, it's lined up with these. We want to actually kind of put it right next to these. So if we were to go ahead and make this zero, you can see it lines right up. We don't want it to be quite zero. We don't want to have a little bit of thickness there. So maybe uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.25 maybe. Okay, so we've got a network of curves now built. One, two, three, four curves that we've got here. Now I want to actually have these curves, same curves on the other side. So if this is our center line, then we want to actually duplicate these over to the other side. So I'm going to take all these curves and I want to duplicate them together. So I'm just going to temporarily group them together, which gives us a pivot at the center. And one of the ways that we can get something moved from this side of an axis to the other side is to do a negative scale. So we'll go ahead and duplicate it, hitting control D Okay, so we've got a duplicate here. Now, if we scale this, you can see we can scale it down to zero. If we go back the other way, you can see it scales on the other side. So if we set that scale in the X to negative one, we can get geometry over on the other side. Okay, let's turn off our image plane here in our perspective, which I can do by just turning off the camera visibility. All right, and now we want to start to create some geometry. So let's start by lofting this curve and this curve and this curve. So when you're lofting, you want to make sure that you select the curves in order you want the geometry to flow from. So we wouldn't want to select this one, then this one, then this one. We want it to go over the top. 
So we'll select these three and go to surfaces, surfaces, and loft. We open up the options. You can see we have, we can select, set that to uniform, cubic. We'll go ahead and leave everything as is. We'll leave it as NURBS. And we'll go ahead and create that. We'll turn on smooth shade. And you can see we have some geometry that's been created between those three curves. Okay. Let's do the same thing between this curve and this curve. Okay. We'll go ahead and loft. And now we have some geometry between those. And we'll do the same thing between this curve and this curve. Okay, and I want to have those sharp lines there. Otherwise, you could loft as we did here with between the three curves. But I want to, in this case, I want to have those lines there. Okay. Now, if we turn off our NURBS curve visibility, you can see the geometry that we're able to create with those curves. Okay. Now, the great thing is the history allows us to select the curves. For instance, if I have this curve here and I select one of these points and I move it, those pieces of geometry follow along. So if we need to modify something and we need to modify the curves, we can do that and the, the geometry will actually follow. Okay, so we've been able to create from a few NURBS curves some geometry for our uh, bike frame. So in the next lesson, let's uh, use a similar technique to work on sort of the front portion here if we look at this uh, kind of this front fork part all right so we'll go ahead and continue on with this in the next lesson